Hi, everyone. I am Connie Zabel-Schmucker, Advocacy Director for Bicycle Garage Indy. Thank you for joining us for Bicycling Lunch and Learn. I'm going to hand this over to Tess Woods, who is going to introduce the speakers that we have today for our Bicycling Lunch and Learn. And this is a program of the Cycle Commuter Task Force, which is a collaboration between Bicycle Garage Indy, Bike Indianapolis, uh, Commuter Connect, and uh, Central Indiana Bicycling Association. So thank you all for coming. And I will turn this over to Tess from Bike Indianapolis. Good afternoon. As Connie said, I'm Tess Woods with Bike Indianapolis and welcome everyone. Uh, our topic today is trail updates. So we have three individuals here to discuss that. Um, we have Jamie McPherson with the Department of Public Works. We have Kevin Whited with Bike Carmel and we have Jeff Smallwood with the BNO Trail. So we're gonna go ahead and get started with uh, Jamie. All right, hi everybody. Um, so what I'm going to do is take you guys through a um, uh, a look at a map that gets updated quite frequently, and I'm going to start with projects that are in construction right now, so that we can go through and take a look at some of the cross sections to see um, what new facilities you're going to be able to be riding on really soon. Um, so I think that'll be really fun. Um, I have a couple other projects on here that are. Um, that have bid. So we we design the projects and then we put them out for different contractors to bid. And then um, if uh, if we have enough money to afford that bid, we award them. Um, so we've got one that is um, bid and awarded. So I've included that one on here. And then uh, I wanted to show the current nickel plate alignment um, in the area around the fairgrounds. And then I have a handful of projects that I want to talk about some of the interesting ways that we've been able to um, accommodate cyclists um, in ways that we were not so good at doing in the past. So um, we'll go into, into that. And if I, I'm going to take 10 minutes, maybe 15 minutes. Um, if I'm not completely out of time, I'll go into projects that are in design that um, are noteworthy for um, bikeability. And if we don't get to that, maybe we do more of these and we talk about them as they come up. So, um, so yeah, please uh, go ahead and put questions in the chat and um, I think Connie and Tess are monitoring those um, and um, we'll try to address those as best we can. So, all right, here we go. There's a lot, there's a lot in construction right now, so. All right, um, are we able to, are we able to see this map? No, not yet, okay. Are we good? Yes. Okay, perfect. Great. So um, this is a map of uh, most of the projects that are in construction right now. Um, we're gonna, I think what I'm gonna do is start from the south and work our way north. Um, and I'm gonna zoom in with the streets on and then I'll show you what, what they look like, like as of um, like this month, essentially. Um, and then we'll zoom out to the roads and do the same thing. Um, so the first one I want to start with is the Meridian Old South Side project. Um, so that is running from McCarty Street um, down to Arizona. Um, and that will link up to a neighbor way that we're installing along Orange Street um, to give us access to the future um, uh, Madison, the Madison Street Trail and some coordination we're doing with INDOT over 65. Um, so we'll swap over and zooming in. Um, this part is in construction, the part just north of Morris Street and the part to the south on McCarty. This is what it looked like as of July 11th. It is now open. Um, and what you can see here on the east side um, is a um, trail width um, landscape separated uh, concrete trail. So um, 10 feet, uh, and then it has these different concrete portions um, to, to kind of give some interest to the trail. And then uh, you can't quite see it in here, but we do have some uh, markings that are ground into the concrete to show like two directions of travel 
um, new sidewalks, uh, some resurfacing. We redid the radii on the curbs to make sure that um, uh, vehicles that are traveling in and out have to go at a slower speed. Um, and the connectivity that that pr provides is um, to the park here, to Orange Street, and then on the north side, um, there is a very calm old, old Meridian Street that connects to a um, path through this greenery. And that brings us up to the next exciting project that we're doing. So we've got a uh, cultural trail 2.0. So we've got that going along the south side of South Street. Um, so it's in construction. This is what it'll look like complete. And that will move all the way over to the um, original portion of the cultural trail um, that you all are familiar with right over here. So this is Virginia Avenue um, with the Red Line station. So this will connect um, to the rest of the cultural trail network there. Um, this project will be extending further west um, and over a brand new bridge, um, which uh, I'm gonna do a little swap over on the sharing real quick. Oh, maybe not. Well, it won't let me do that. So we're just going to continue with what we've got. But um, I'll zoom out so you guys can see that. I had some images of the bridge, which um, uh, if we get through this, I can show you guys that. But um, the bridge will basically be crossing the White River with um, Alonco into the Alonco site. Um, and that will be cultural trail level um, connectivity across the White River over here, which is very, very exciting. Um, I'll go back to roads to help you guys orient. So Capitol, West Street, South Street, here's McCarty, South Meridian Street, um, that little piece of trail right there. Um, so moving northward, we've got um, College Avenue is in construction currently. Um, New York and Michigan Street uh, will be upgrading um, the protected bike infrastructure as part of this project. It's uh, in collaboration with Indigo. Um, so we'll be um, consolidating the bus routes to make that much more you know, um, convenient for bus riders. If you miss your stop, you don't have to walk several blocks. You just have to wait a little bit. Um, that project um, is awarded and we'll be heading into construction. Um, basically, this will be from Ellenberger Park over to College Avenue. And the project manager was able, able to incorporate um, a neighbor way treatment to connect um, basically the confluence of the cultural trail, the Monon and Pokes Run. Um, so we have a, a neighbor way that goes down Dorman Street, um, crosses Pogues Run with that ped bridge, continues. Um, so you'll go to the signalized intersection at Highland and Michigan and be able to continue down to Market Street, which is another highway crossing. Um, and then future projects that'll help connect to the Southeastern Trail that's on the north side of Southeastern and connects you all the way over to Pleasant Run. Um, all that being said, I wanted to focus on stuff that's in construction. So we'll take a look at um, college. And what you can see is we will have a um, bike lane uh, on a, a bike lane on the east side heading up from New York um, at Michigan Street. We will be able to convert that to a two-way cycle track on the west side. Um, we are adding some protected intersection improvements at this area. Um, and then this will link up with the cultural trail uh, in two places, basically. Um, it'll pop up right here. Uh, but you could choose to continue on street if you wanted to continue northward. Um, so basically that'll go to right here and the termination of the two-way will be where college is already two-way here at Massachusetts Avenue. Um, so going back to the road so we can reorient. So here we are at St. Clair, which goes under the highway, Massachusetts and college. Um, and then the whole bottle works facility is right over here. Um, Moving over a little bit to our west, 
Um, so the other portion of the um, Cultural Trail 2.0 um, is along Indiana Avenue from West Street up to 10th. Um, it curves along 10th Street to meet up with Riley Drive, which is the location of the 16 Tech Bridge. Um, and then that all um, makes this amazing nexus of trails. We've got the extension of the Fall Creek Trail that is um, technically still in construction, but rideable. Um, and then there'll be some improvements to the White River area and um, 16 Tech with their campus plan. Um, so let's see how they're doing. So Indiana Avenue is um, down to just one uh, lane going this way to make room for the construction along uh, Indiana Avenue. Um, this is the Madam Walker Theater right here. Um, they've poured the concrete, which will support the rest of the cultural trail on the um, like north, like the northeast side, we'll call it. Um, that connects to the current cultural trail that leads down to IUPUI right here. Um, and then we already have it built here on the east side. We will have a crossing here at, oh, I forget the name of this road, sorry. Paca, that's right. Um, so it will cross Paca at a right angle. And then here's the portion of the cultural trail that is complete. So this will be the shared type of cultural trail. Um, so that'll make its way all the way up to Indiana. Um, it will curve over here and then, um, or sorry, no, it'll continue on the east side. And then um, here we go, here's the curve. So it'll curve over towards Riley Drive. Um, we will be reconfiguring this intersection to, um, uh, we'll, we'll still be able to accommodate larger vehicles, um, but it'll be a much safer crossing on both sides. We'll have a ped refuge island over here. Um, and then this part portion will come all the way over to 16 Tech Bridge. Um, so here we are at the 16 Tech Bridge. They have started to install the pylons um, to support this bridge. And we can go back in time a little bit to see how quick they're moving. Um, so basically no impacts August 27th of 2022. Here we are, August of 2023, um, and they are moving and grooving. Um, so yeah, this project is, we're looking at likely two years of construction for the 60 Tech Bridge. Um, we'll get ourselves oriented again. Um, so uh, we've got tenth over White River. Oh, we didn't. We skipped Michigan, so we should go into that. Um, you know, the center of downtown is right here, um, and then we've got the Michigan Street Cycle Track. Um, so IUPUI's campus already has some really good bike connectivity along Michigan Street. Um, we're going to be tying into that starting right here at White River Parkway West and um, Michigan Street. Um, we will be doing a slight modification of the Michigan Street Bridge at post construction using basically our operations team. Um, because the bike facility is basically a two way cycle track on the south side of Michigan Street, um, we're going to match that profile across the bridge to meet up with the cycle track that's that continues on the south side of Michigan Street over here as well. Um, so we'll wait until after construction to make that change. Um, this will be a fully protected intersection as well. Um, and if I figure out how to switch over, I can share those plans with you guys too. Or maybe we do that another time because that might be its own lunch and learn. Um, so yeah, let's see how they're doing. Oh, sorry. That was a little Zoom heavy. Um, so we've got some of the curb work on the north side going on. Um, we have uh, some bus pads. So again, this was done in coordination with Indigo. 
Um, so these will be platforms that make um, boarding and alighting super quick. It's great for transit users. It happens to also be good for traffic um, to keep that flowing. Um, we've got some sidewalk work and bump outs completed over here. Um, and there should be one more bus pad. Yeah, here we go. Yes, and then uh, one more bus platform right up here. Um, so you'll be able to just come on out and board the bus and keep moving. And that project, um, so we will use one of the lights um, to cross that over to the north side so that we can meet up with the b &O Trail. And I was gonna talk about the b &O Trail, but um, we've got folks from b &O that I think can handle that. So we'll try to cover more ground. Um, oops, I don't want the road I will lay. So yeah, and that'll be um, protected two-way bike infrastructure with its own signals, um, that whole length. Um, so the, um, uh, basically the, you know, here's where White River and Fall Creek can flu. Um, this will be the terminus of the Fall Creek Trail. Um, so this will allow you to ride at this point all the way up to Fort Benjamin Harrison from here. Um, and with, uh, the investments from Connected Communities and Circle City Forward, uh, we're planning to extend Fall Creek Trail even more. Um, so this part is super beautiful. We'll take a look at it. And I want to point out two um, important elements to this trail. Um, so this will go along the levee. Um, it's a beautiful ride, um, beautiful walk. There are people, it is, it's um, substantially complete, meaning you can go out and use it. Um, however, they still, they still have construction work to get done. So if you do see construction workers, um, make sure that you're polite. Um, they are still under contract to finish things, but we wanted to make allow people to use it as soon as possible. Um, so kind of we're their guest for now, um, but you should definitely feel free using these. Um, we installed a Hawk signal at this location. Um, that's a new piece of, a fairly new piece of infrastructure for folks coming along here. Um, I think it would be a great place to do some demonstration projects to kind of teach the public how these things work and what they should do. Um, if you guys are interested in that, feel free to message me later. Um, this part is actually paved now. And then the other exciting element is this beautiful bridge. Um, so this crosses Fall Creek and gives a super beautiful view, both north and south. Um, connects us over to 18th Street, where the Fall Creek Trail um, runs northward. There's a great little brewery over here if you guys want to stop off for some food. Um, this connects to um, Birdsell Parkway, which has a pair of just normal bike lanes, but the Fall Creek Trail uh, is already complete over on this side. And then the next exciting one, you can access via these bike lanes on Birdsell, the Riverside Promenade, uh, which will go from um, basically the 30th Street Bridge um, south to 16th Street on the west side. And it's a asphalt trail that um, kind of weaves between all these trees um, up and down and allows you to experience Riverside Park in a really beautiful way. Um, so, um, the crossing at 29th Street, um, currently it's a very long crossing. Um, we do have a bike lane on it. Um, we have a 29th and 30th Street uh, two-way conversion project that has not been bid yet, but that will shorten this crossing and um, concentrate uh, like bike users and that kind of stuff, mostly to 30th Street um, with a much higher level of protection. Um, so this trail has now been constructed um, up to this point here. The 30th Street Bridge will um, be rebuilt and it'll have bike and ped infrastructure on the north side. The bridge will be open to bikes and pedestrians before traffic, uh, which is kind of an exciting thing. Um, I also wanted, this is a complete project, uh, but I did want to highlight it because um, it is some good coordination. So we've got 913 Sports 
their facility is right over here. Um, so in this reconstruction, um, we had various different cross sections, um, basically nudged the bridge to the south. So we have a sidewalk on this side, but a multi-use path, like a 12 or foot, 14 foot um, asphalt grade concrete um, uh, curb, like a, it's like an eight inch curb separated with bollards along here um, to allow uh, kids from 913 to easily access the canal tow path right here. Um, this is a uh, cross section that we plan to use in other situations because um, it's it's super useful. All right, and ooh, I'm starting to use up my time. So um, we are, I think we're getting, yeah, we are almost done um, with the stuff that's in construction. So um, over in the south of Fall Creek area, we have two projects that are in construction. Um, the first one is a separated bike and pedestrian path. Um, on the east side of Capitol with um, a landscape buffer between the two and um, bump outs that will have um, two to three trees in them. Um, so you can see uh, basically the outline of where that trail will be. Um, we have some raised crosswalks that should help calm traffic along with the bump outs um, so that our maximum speed approaches the um, actually signed speed um, along this area and gives folks more access across um, Capitol Avenue. Um, this project will connect directly to the 22nd Street cycle track that is now in construction. And um, that cycle track will go along the south side of 22nd Street. Um, they are in construction and moving quick, but I don't think we actually have any photographic evidence of that on this project. But um, if you're going through 22nd Street, you'll see the um, concrete uh, protection between bikes and vehicles um, that will be signalized. So bikes will have their own signal and it should feel way more comfortable to walk on the south side sidewalk as well. Um, and then, very last one. Um, we have, oh, actually that is, it for the things that are in construction. Um, I did want to point out um, one more bridge project that's in design. Um, so we have Lafayette um, over Little Eagle Creek. If you look at the bike lanes here, we have a bike lane and then ugh, kind of just gives up and turns into Sharrows over this bridge. Um, so we'll be providing separate bike access on both sides. Um, one of the things that we're considering is making a multi-use um, path section up to this location to preserve the ability to um, put one along this lev levee that leads up to the um, this uh, healthplex center on the north side. Um, so just keep a, a heads up for that. So. So yeah, that is all of our projects in construction. I do have a list of um, things in design, but I think for time's sake, I might want to go ahead and hand it over at this point. All right, there are a couple of questions. Oh, okay. So, um, and that was a lot of information. <laughs> Sorry, yeah, I know, very, very much info. <laughs> uh, so someone wants to get a map of a copy of the map that you just showed. Sure. Yeah. If possible. Absolutely. Um, I can send that out for sure. Yeah. And if you could send that to me or a link to it, then I can also put that in the description of the YouTube recording so people can have it. Um, if there are any plans to improve bike lanes on New York and Michigan, which I Correct. think you did mention. They will all be um, protected bike infrastructure the entire length. They will remain, except for a few exceptions, currently they're remaining one way, um, but we've built them, like the guidance around two-way cycle tracks on two-way streets is quite challenging right now and ambiguous. And so we've preserved our ability to convert them to, to two-way based on the width, but we will implement them as one way. Okay. And then there was another question about a comprehensive paved trail map, um, which was answered. There oh, okay. is an Indiana Trail Finder 
that has information, but it's of course subject to updates that the DNR gets. But I think those are all the questions that we've got so far. And hopefully you guys stole the sharing away and I'm not just, you're not watching me download this map right now, but. Uh, no. Okay, so great. You, gotta, you have to, no, you have to go ahead and get rid of your sharing. And oh, then, I do? Okay. Yes. For some reason, it disappears. I'm having a very difficult time accessing it. I think you have to, it's either at the top or the bottom. We can still see your screen. So, okay, I can stop you. I can stop Yeah, you. if you can go ahead and do that, because it yep, is, I'll do that. Ah, there we go. Okay, thank you. Okay, all right, it, so. Yeah, it disappears Kevin, you, for some reason. Yeah, Kevin, if you want to go ahead and um, start sharing. Share your screen, I think. All you know. right, so I think. All right, let me get my slideshow up. All right. You guys still there? Yeah, there you are. All right. I'm going to share screen two. And where is it? There it is. All right. Can you see my notes on this one, Connie? Yes. Okay. Then I should have shared screen one. So let me do that real quick. Sorry, you guys, we practiced this before. There we go. <clears throat> All right. Now, let's try this. There we go. All right. I think we're good. All right. All right. So, uh, my name is Kevin Whited. I'm with the City of Carmel. Um, I do bike ped planning and then also uh, electric vehicle infrastructure. And so um, one of the programs I run is Bike Carmel. Pretty much any of the bicycle related stuff falls under Bike Carmel. Really, Bike Carmel is more of the marketing wing of uh, our planning. So let me see if I... All right, here's just an overview of our network. <laughs> I updated a slide, I don't know, a month or two ago. It's actually changed already. Uh, we have installed more um, side paths along uh, several of our roadways, which we'll get into in a minute. And then I wanted to, boom, all right. So here's our new city rankings. Um, we also are a bicycle friendly city. Um, I didn't put the new badge up. They gave us silver again, uh, which I'm, I guess I'm okay with. I was hoping we'd get upgraded. Um, uh, I think the city ratings for people for bikes is interesting. I was, <laughs> I was getting ready to ride a meter release last week or two weeks ago. And I in it, you know, how you always have to pump up the city or whatever, who it is ever you're working for. I was going to say we're the number one city in the state of Indiana, but do you guys know who the number one city in the state of Indiana is now? If your no. guess was Santa Claus, Indiana, you would have been correct. <laughs> Mine was not. Yeah, so I, I think they messed their rankings up. It says every, I, th I think how they did it is every street in the city of uh, Santa Claus is 25 miles an hour below. And I think that's how the ranking happened. So, all right. So uh, this is real quick. This was the uh, railway, um, the Monon uh, before so the city of Indianapolis, for you guys that haven't been around a long time, developed the Monon first, and then um, Carmel, and then eventually further north, developed the Monon. And for you guys that weren't around for that, because some of you weren't, it was very contentious in Indianapolis, and I would argue even more contentious in Carmel. There you go. There were people that that's our mayor who is retiring this year, but uh, there were people at some of its press conferences that were not happy about the Monon. All right, so um, back in 2000-ish, 
we developed this thing called the Alternative Transportation Plan. It's been changed many times. Uh, this was originally in 2000. You can see the Monon on here and then some other trails and a little bit of infrastructure, but this was our plan. Uh, so this is the, in 2001, this is all we had. You can see we had the Monon and a couple trails off to the east. And then this is our current, our current network, right? So you can see how much we've progressed in those 23 years or 22 years. Um, and then so, uh, real quick before we move on, um, the big plan was just we wanted we wanted side paths on on our arterials. That was the big the big thing, and it's still the big thing for us. And we focused on side paths or trails, some people call them, because we have the infrastructure. I mean, we had the space, right? You know, when you think about Carmel, it was developed as a greenfield. Most of it was, right? You know, unfortunately, you have older cities like Indianapolis and stuff that you just couldn't do that in, right? They don't have the space. The ironic thing is that we got beat up by the league for years because we were building side paths and not on street infrastructure. Uh, as you guys, for the people that haven't been around a long time in the bike advocacy world, uh, for years, we didn't want, bicyclists didn't want to be pushed off the roadway because we thought we were looked at as second-class citizens. And then as uh, we, and there are still some people that feel that way. Um, but as data improved and we could see uh, fatality rates, different things like that, or, or just how many more people rode once they weren't riding in a roadway and there was paint protecting you basically from vehicles, uh, we started to move towards this and we and also information from overseas, but we started to move towards the side path thing. And then all of a sudden, Carmel started getting a lot of accolades for all our side paths. But we've been doing it for years and been being beat up on it. So it was kind of interesting. Um, and then that's the same map. We just I just put them together so you could see the difference. Um, in 2003, we required developers to either build paths or contribute to a path fund. But we really pushed them towards a building their own path because they already have the construction equipment out there. It's cheaper for them. And um, sometimes that path fund got used for other stuff. And so, yeah, that's what we, that's why we pushed them towards that path fund. All right. So here's what we were talking about. Mine's not going to be nearly as comprehensive as Jamie. I didn't want to do maps. These are all, all the projects we're working on right now, but I'm going to start at the top bullet point. So there was a bond. Some of you may have heard about that was passed in Carmel City Council in the fall. It was for like 60 million and something like that. 40 million of that is just put aside for bicycle infrastructure. So we were super, super stoked about that. And um, I'll talk about that in the next slide. But these are the, all the other projects that you can see below that are stuff we are currently working on and it's been in the hopper. So um, it's not coming out of that $40 million. So the White River Trail extension, if you guys are familiar with the, the White River Trail now, it runs along the White River, it stops, I don't know, it's tim tall timber run or timber run something, and then jumps across River Road and runs on a side path, but we're gonna extend that all the way up to 146th Street. Uh, I'm sure the White River Bridge, oh geez, sorry you guys, there's a typo, it says 146, it's supposed to be 106th Street. Um, that's being bid out now. You guys probably read about all of that in the paper. Um, Sadly, uh, the bids have been coming back about 30% over what we had budgeted for the project. So, so I'm not sure what's going to happen next. Um, but again, sorry, that's not 146, it's 106. Trail in front of West Park. For you guys that ride along, or ride around in Carmel, there are some gaps in our trail network, which we'll get to in the next slide. So this is one of them. Um, we're filling that one in as of now. So, um, and then we're also working on a on a trail across the street, which is where University High School is. So um, that should be up. I don't know. I think that trail goes in next year. So we have the, the gray road path, which is actually under construction right now. It runs from 106th to 116th. Uh, the Monon path extension expansion. Um, so that is, if you guys ride the Monon much, there was a a shopping center to the east of the trail called Mohawk, or I think they changed the name for sensitivity reasons, but which, you know, it is what it is. 
that's all leveled now. When they build that up, they're also going to then improve the Monon and it's going to look more like the section just north of that. Um, so it'll be separated bike pads, the whole nine yards. Uh, Main Street, if anybody rides in Carmel again, there's a bunch of gaps on Main Street. This project is in bidding now and it will cover from 31 or Meridian all the way to River Road. Um, we aren't changing like the footprint down in the downtown area, the arts and design district. Um, we're working on that. So the, the traffic in that area runs relatively slow. So if you're comfortable, people ride on the roadway, it's very narrow. Uh, the speeds are really slow. Um, we're also looking at, we've done it a few times, look at different ways to route, especially some of the school kids, either south of the Monon or north of the Monon and get them across safely across range line, which is a busy, could be a busy road. Um, and the last thing, 96, oh, so the um, 96th Street, you know, there's a gap along 96th Street in several places. And finally, we're filling in that ditch to Spring Mill, which is in bidding now. Um, so, and then just with questions, I'll cover those at the end. So the next, I'm sorry, this is a little grainy. I didn't have a scalable file, it's just a PDF. So that $40 million bond, and I'll run through this really quickly. A couple years ago, I've been here for about five years. There's a city council person who, who were renamed nameless at this time. When I first met him, he was very nice, but he said, your job shouldn't even exist, which I thought was really interesting. Uh, about a year later, he bought a bike and he and his wife started riding. And then he started asking me questions. And then like four or five years later, well, I guess it was four years later, he said, Kevin, what would it take to fill in all the gaps in our trail network all across the city. And I'm like, well, more than our city budget, but we can put together this ranking system. And if you can actually read that, again, it's grainy, there's numbers on it. And so when they pass that $40 million bond, we there's a spreadsheet also that uh, is attached to this. Um, they went through and figured out like, all right, what can we fund with it? So that ranking system was just like whether we own the right of way, if we don't, how much it would cost, is there any infrastructure we need to deal with in the right of way? There's all, you know, all those things for you guys that deal in projects know about it. And um, so there you go. So uh, this is super exciting. Um, we'll start, I think there's already one project bid against this bond. So um, the map contains about 30 projects. If that, again, since it's so grainy, you might not be able to read it. This is just our city map. Um, it's kind of cartoonish and I'd like something a little bit better, but uh, there you go. And then the last thing I had to do this, my shameless plug for our roundabout ride, which is in September, if anybody wants to come, there's a 25 mile and a 50 mile loop. And there you go, there's my contact information. Sorry that I zoomed through it, but I know we only have about 15 minutes left and one more presenter. Uh, does anybody have any questions? We didn't get any questions on that, but I do have a request of if you can send me a copy of your slides so that I can put a link to that in the descriptions. That would be awesome. That's a deal. Easy to do. Thank you. Thank you, Kevin. I appreciate it. And Jamie, thank you as well. Um, this has all been really great information. We've got one more. We have Jeff Smallwood with the B&O. Jeff, you have to unmute yourself. Oh, okay. I keep doing that and you keep muting. <laughs> okay, here we go. And full screen. Here we go. You seeing it? Yes, it's up. Okay. So, um, yeah, I represent the BNO Trail Association. We, uh, we were formed in 1993 as a nonprofit organization. We're an all volunteer organization. We have no paid employees at all. Uh, it was started by Diana Virgil, the lady, if you're seeing my cursor, uh, the lady here in the center of this picture. This was a, one of our uh, ribbon cutting ceremonies back in 2017 at a, at a phase of the trail in Brownsburg. Um, our vision was to develop a recreational trail all the way from Indianapolis to Montezuma, Indiana, which is a little town on the Wabash River. Uh, and it, the purpose was to give people a place to enjoy walking, jogging, skating, biking, and horseback riding on the, in the outdoors. 
And uh, so this is kind of our, our overall long range vision. And uh, this map uh, starts from Indianapolis on the, the east and then goes across through Claremont, uh, across the south side of Brownsburg and Hendricks County, across Hendricks County to the town of North Salem. Uh, and then it goes into the northern edge of Putnam County, where it goes through Rochdale and Russellville. And then it meanders through Park County, uh, going through the towns of Marshall, uh, Bloomingdale, and then down to Montezuma, which, as I mentioned, was on the Wabash River. There's actually a beautiful bridge on the Wabash River, which I won't spend much time talking about, but I may get to that just a little bit at the end of the talk if there's, if there's time. But uh, that's kind of our long range vision. Most of the work that's been done so far has been in the eastern half of Hendricks County and some in Marion County. So uh, the, the trail that's actually open today that you can go out there and ride on, on paved road is, is essentially, well, this is Hendricks County. The east end of this is a raceway road is the, is the Hendricks Marion County line. And so it starts there and goes west across the south side of Brownsburg and extends all the way out to County Road 250E. It's about 8.2 miles at this point. There are uh, parking areas, uh, or if you stuck out the west, here at County Road 500E, there's a parking area there. Uh, in the town of Brownsburg along Green Street, there's a, there's a parking area. Just a little east of that is a, both a parking area and restrooms. And then uh, at the east end, end of here, just over County Road 300N, which is just at the east edge of Brownsburg, there's a park that's under construction called Virgil Park, named after Diana Virgil, who started the B&O Trail effort back in the early 90s. And there will be parking and I think restrooms as well there. If we look at connectivity, as you can see, the green vertical or green north and south uh, here along Ronald Reagan Parkway, there's a, there's a trail the entire length of Ronald Reagan Parkway, which crosses the B&O Trail. Just a little west of that is the Bicentennial Trail that goes south into Avon. And that was a joint effort between the towns of Avon and Brownsburg. It goes about two miles from the B&O down to County Road 100N, which becomes 10th Street in Marion County. So it's the same thing as 10th Street, just uh, it takes on a county road number when it gets into Hendricks County. Uh, and that's, a, that's another paved trail that connects. And then uh, along Whitelick Creek, there's a beautiful bridge over Whitelick Creek. I'll be showing you in just a, a minute or so. And there, there is an effort, a long range effort to have a trail going all along White Lake Creek through Hendricks County. The towns of Avon and Plainfield have already got extensive amounts of trail along the creek. Brownsburg has got a little bit, but it does not where it connects to the B&O Trail at this time. But the, the plan is to eventually have a trail that will cross the B&O Trail along White Lake Creek for pretty much the entire length of Hendricks County. Uh, and then, then I guess that those are the main features of that trail. Um, just some pictures here. These are kind of our typical trail users. We both have pedestrians, bicyclists, and, and even equestrians uh, on our horse trail. Uh, this is the tunnel under Ronald Reagan Parkway. It's uh, got murals on the inside of the tunnel that were done by a, a variety of local artists. And uh, one of them was a school group. The art teacher at the school went out and sketched out the, uh, kind of traced out the paintings. And then the kids all went out and painted by numbers and made it a really beautiful mural of scenes around uh, the Indianapolis area. Uh, this is a shelter house that was the local Brownsburg Rotary Club helped us fund this shelter house, which was at our Green Street trailhead. This is a Hawk signal crossing. Uh, Green Street, which is also the same as State Road 267 in Brownsburg, is a, is a busy road. And so this is a user activated signal. Uh, the trail user pushes a button on the pole. But within just a few seconds, the lights change, which stops the motorized traffic and then the, the trail user can cross safely. That's been a really popular feature there. Uh, it's been well received by motorists as well. We were a little concerned about that might uh, create some you know, bad feelings among motorists who now have to stop trail users rather than just plowing on through that area, but uh, they've actually received it quite well. Uh, this is the bridge over White Lake Creek. Uh, looking at, up at it from the creek level, it's, it's a pretty long expanse. And as you can see, it's got these little uh, projections which are uh, viewpoints. You can step out off the trail onto those areas to enjoy the scenery. And this is up on trail level. This is the same bridge. Uh, just some people enjoying the trail. And this is the view of the creek from the trail. Uh, this picture was obviously taken in the winter, but it's a, it's a beautiful view from up there. Uh, and these are some of our, our volunteers. I, I mentioned we're an all-volunteer organization, and all of our maintenance is done 
by volunteers, and uh, it's it's a it's a big undertaking. And we're we're coming to the point where, as we continue to build more trail, we're realizing we may have to go to a different model and start actually hiring people to do some of the work. But uh, to this point, we've we've done all of that with uh, with volunteers. So I'll talk just a little about Next Level Trail. That's been a game changer for our trail and for lots of trails around the state of Indiana. Um, the state allocated uh, approximately $150 million to trails around the state. Uh, it's, it's administered by the Department of Natural Resources. And uh, I won't spend a lot of time on these, but in 2019, the Speedway Trails Association was awarded uh, $4.8 million plus their own matching money uh, to, to build the B&O Trail through Speedway and to connect to downtown and to continue, also to continue west across uh, the western part of Marion County. Um, and then in 2021, the B&O Trail Association also received a, a four, about a four and a half million dollar grant from that same program for the, uh, the section of the B&O Trail that goes through Hendricks County and then also connecting the from Hendricks County into, uh, into Marion County. I'll just kind of show you this map. So town of Brownsburg here in the center, the solid red line from Raceway Road to a little ways west of Brownsburg is what was already completed before the Next Level Trail Project. That was uh, about a 6.2 6 mile stretch of paved trail. Uh, the Next Level Trail funds will pay, provide the money to connect us from Raceway Road going east to where we connect with the Speedway Trails Association project. Uh, and then it will also provide the funding to go west another two miles to this is County Road 250E, which may, may, mean, nothing, may mean nothing to you, but it's, uh, it's where it currently ends. Uh, we will skip over about a mile and a half and then do another almost two miles of trail from this little town of Maplewood going west to County Road 50W. That takes you to pretty much the center of Hendricks County at that point. This two mile section uh, right here that I kind of filled in the dash line with a solid red line, that has already been built. It just opened this spring, and uh, we've been seeing an incredible number of bicycle users on this new section of two miles. It gets you, it gets you away from Brownsburg and out into the country where you're in a truly rural area out there. I would also point out that nor just north of that is the town of Pittsburgh, and it's a pretty easy connection along this little county road here into from Pittsburgh down to the B&O Trail. But the the town council of Pittsburgh has expressed a strong interest in being able to connect, make a connection from Pittsburgh down to the Biendo Trail. So that kind of gives you an overview of where we go. And then we come down here uh, uh, in the speedway section, we'll cross under height 465. Fortunately, several years ago when the, when the state completely rebuilt the west side of 465, they put a tunnel under there just for the Biendo Trail, which was wonderful foresight and allows us the opportunity to be able to go under the, uh, right under 465 and uh, cross Eagle Creek. I'll get into a little more of that as we get into more of the speedway section. But so <clears throat> this is a, one of our uh, road crossings just west of Brownsburg. As you can see, we've got these concrete nodes that every crossing gives the bis bicyclists an opportunity to slow or stop, uh, make sure there's no traffic coming. Uh, this is part of the, the new section of trail I mentioned that was just opened in the spring, goes west into Hendricks County. This is another trail crossing farther out into the county. As you can see, it's getting into a very rural area. And uh, it, they, they have to curve the trail so that we can make it crossing straight across. If you may have noticed on the map, since our trail goes at a northwest ang angle, it's not just a due east and west trail, we cross some of the county roads at a really severe angle. And that's not really a safe crossing. So the designers plan the trail so that it curves right before it gets to a road crossing. And then you can make a perpendicular crossing. Uh, this is just a group of people enjoying the, the trail during our, our June bike ride. That's uh, the second week, Saturday in June, every year we have a fundraising bike ride that tracks between seven and 800 people typically. Uh, and this is the end of the trail where it currently ends at the west end. And we have a park bench there. We have park benches at pretty much every road crossing. And this is a map of the speedway uh, section of the, of the next level trail project. Uh, this map's not real easy to read, but uh, at the far east end here is Michigan Street. And Jamie was just talking about the project they're doing along Michigan Street where they're putting bike lanes in. And so the b and Trail will, has, in fact, it's already been done. It, it now connects to Michigan Street. 
And so as soon as uh, DPW finishes that project, you'll be able to ride the BNO Trail all the way across Speedway into downtown and across Michigan Street to connect with the White River Trail to the Cultural Trail and eventually to the Monon Trail. Uh, from Main Street and Speedway, it was already finished all the way over to the west end of Speedway where it crosses Eagle Creek. There was not previously a bridge over Eagle Creek, so part of the funding for the Next Level Trail was building a bridge over Eagle Creek right here. And then we, it will, the construction will continue west where it will meet with the, uh, the part that B&O Trail Association is doing right here. If you're at all familiar with the west side, there's a neighborhood called Farley. It's near Ben Davis High School. In fact, uh, you, you may be familiar with Ben Davis. This is Girls School Road. The high school would be right here. So we're, we're really close to high schools, the, the elementary schools, parks, churches, all kinds of things that it provides connectivity to. Uh, this is the bridge over Eagle Creek. Uh, to carry the Speedway theme, they put this nice mural on the side of the bridge, supports the checkerboard uh, and bicyclists and runners. And then up here is just one of the street crossings in the, between Speedway and downtown Indy with the, uh, the signal there for the crossing. Jeff, we have a question um, yep. on a, the section on West Michigan. Maybe you or Jamie know. Um, will that be called the BNO Trail or is that is that just going to be on on Michigan Road and not called the BNO Trail? Uh, <laughs> I don't know. No one's ever asked that before. Uh, I I don't think it's going. I don't. I really don't know. You'd have to ask Jamie. I, as far as I know, it's just being called Michigan Street. Uh, we're we're kind of considering the terminus of the BNO to be the intersection with Michigan. Um, okay. You know, if it, I mean, if it keeps going, that's cool. But the, the Michigan Street one will just, I, I think we'll, we've just been calling it the Michigan Street cycle track um, and not trying yeah. to brand it as a DNO trail. I don't, I don't think we, well, yeah, I guess we're considering it on street and so not really considering it Greenway standard. So we probably wouldn't want to call it DNO unless we had like a good reason to. Yeah, thanks, Jamie. That's, uh, I had never heard it called DNO, so. I assume that was the case. All right. Uh, moving on then, let's see. Now, uh, and it, this is this crossing at 10th Street, just on the east edge of Speedway. Uh, that's a hawk signal crossing. And it's the same thing I just showed in Brownsburg where the trail user pushes a button, it activates the signals to stop motorists, and then you can safely cross. And they also did a nice treatment here where they embedded into the pavement this nice design, which actually you can't really see it, what the logo is here, but it's a it's a logo the B&O Trail uses in places that's stamped into the asphalt paving as well. Um, so kind of additional or future developments, we received, a, in addition to the next level trail funding, we received a $900,000 grant from the Hendricks County government from their American Rescue Plan funds. That was the COVID relief money that the federal government gave to counties all over the country. And so the Hendricks County has gone from where there was very little support for the trail to now where they're uh, finding ways of giving us pretty large grants to support further development of the trail in, in Hendricks County, which is really exciting development in the county. Um, and kind of what we're doing next, I, as I just as far as ma continue to ma manage maintenance with volunteers, uh, raising money to continue more trail. Uh, one thing we're really emphasizing here, I look at the fourth bullet point, this building partnerships with Putnam Park and Vermilion counties. There's a group, a trail group out in the, that area. They actually meet in Terre Haute on a regular basis uh, called the Crossroads Trails Alliance. And I've been meeting with that group on a regular basis. In fact, they meet right after this one at one o'clock. I'm late, looks like. Um, and so there's a lot of interest out there in, in continuing the B and not only the B&O Trail, but the Vandalia Trail also goes down into that area and, uh, and other trails. In fact, Park County actually received the $5 million Next Level Trail grant for a north-south trail that would uh, eventually connect to the BNO Trail. So there's the potential out there for a 125-mile west-central rail trail loop that would include the Vandalia Trail, the BNO Trail, and a north-south trail in, uh, in Park County. And that would be a fantastic development for cycling in, in, west in western Indiana. So I think, uh, oh, I just was gonna show you real quickly this bridge. I mentioned a bridge over the Wabash River. It's a huge, Wabash River, as you may know, is really a wide river. This is a more than a 200 foot long bridge across the uh, uh, 
Wabash River and some local volunteers out there put a huge amount of effort into decking this bridge with these, they're, they're like a concrete like panel that you put in there and benches and, and side rails and all kinds of stuff. It's, it's a totally functional bridge as it is. It just doesn't connect to a whole lot on either end at this point, but they're working on this out there and this would be a, a, a one of the Western ends of the BNO Trail eventually. So that's all I've got. Uh, welcome to address any questions. I know it's fast, but uh, I want to get through some of those things. Yeah, I'm trying to look to see if there's any additional questions. Um, oh, do you have community engagement like planting flowers along the trail? We do. We often have a couple of things. We have work days that we uh, we publish. We typically do the, publish those on Facebook. We also have, we work with a lot of businesses who want to do like an employee day of service kind of thing. And we work with a number of different businesses who uh, express interest in that. And then we will identify a project that would help enhance the trail. And we've done that with uh, Duke Energy. We've done that with the Hendrix Power and a number of other smaller businesses in the area that have wanted to do that sort of thing. We also work with scout groups. In fact, we just completed an Eagle Scout project along the trail to enhance the equestrian trail. So there's all kinds of things available like that. Awesome. And I'll make the same request of you if you can send me a copy of your slides so that I can put that in the description for people who sure. see this later. That would be great. Um, I wanna thank all of the presenters and um, Tess, did you have any anything you wanted to add? We've got some events coming up. We're kind of running up late on time, but I wanted to make sure we. Yeah, uh, well, we have the um, active uh, transportation meetup coming up. Wow, is that next Thursday already? Um, so that's um, the, we had our first one last month and we have the next one that this next Thursday, we meet down at Tinker on Market Street at 7 a.m. if you wanna join us for that. Um, and the other thing is the Car Free Day, which is coming up September 22nd. Uh, so that's another uh, big event that we're encouraging people to commute down to, um, uh, to downtown to participate in that. And then I just saw Jamie mention, obviously the Pendleton Park at the state fairgrounds, which I just rode by on my way to um, here. And uh, lots of people are using that. So that's a, a great option to attend the fair and they'll watch yeah. it. There's also going to be a bike to the fairgrounds with the mayor this Saturday. Oh, that's right. Yes. Um, yeah. Starting at Riverside Park. So, um, so if you are a subscriber to Bicycle Indiana or Bicycle Garage Indy's uh, newsletter, uh, that information on that will be in there as well as the car free day will be in the future. So car, uh, next month we're gonna have for the lunch and learn will be Amanda Meyer from Commuter Connect that will be talking about car free day as well as Commuter Connect's bike buddy program and the other things that they do for active transportation. So that's our September lunch and learn and our October lunch and learn is uh, help me, <laughs> uh, riding in the cold and dark, right? <laughs> okay. Yeah. So, um, which in October will probably be riding in the cold and dark. Um, so thank you all for coming and look for the recording. If you want to want to see that, uh, look at the maps a little closer or slow it down because there was a lot of great information. I want to thank our presenters for, for taking the time to you know, provide all of this for us. Thank you. And have a great day. <laughs>